Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the sturdy, German-built, tube-driven 20-watt lunchbox amp lurking behind me, the Engel Ironball E606. Brace yourself. <laughs> Yep, sloppy playing or not, this amp makes me wanna play. Now, as you can see, it's housed in a solid metal casing and its front panel knobs are recessed. A simple but very smart design consideration. Also, the metal grill not only lets you see the beefy transformers and tubes that power this mini monster, it also ensures they get lots of air. Once again, a pretty smart move as these little glass bottles do get pretty hot. And talking of those glorious tone-generating little glass bottles, the E606 has a quartet of ECC83s or 12XMs in its front end and a pair of EL84s in its power section. <laughs> The Iron Ball has two foot switchable channels, clean and lead, and they both share the same EQ network. And as you're about to discover, even though the Iron Ball may seem at first glance a pretty simple amp, it's actually got some pretty neat features hidden in it. For example, built in studio quality reverb, a tube buffered series effects loop, different output power options, and some pretty darn useful switching options too. Now, as its name suggests, the Iron Ball is definitely aimed at the hard rock slash heavy metal guitar playing arena. That said, its clean channel produces some really nice harmonically rich clean tones and also some snarling bluesy and ACDC approved crunch tones when its gain is cranked a tad. To prove the point, I'm gonna change guitars and let you hear some clean. <laughs> Nice. Now here's some not quite as clean from the same channel. Yep, a clean channel that doesn't have to be clean. That was some nice crunch, even with my playing. And as for the reverb, as we mentioned, that's built in. More will be revealed shortly. Likewise, while the lead channel has a ton of gain too, it can also be very subtle when it wants. Well, relatively speaking, here's a few examples. <laughs> Right, let's take a quick tour of the front panel, shall we? Going from left to right, we have the input jack followed by eight knobs. They are clean gain, lead gain, then bass, middle, treble and presence. Followed by a lead volume control, which enables you to set the relative volume of the two channels to your wishes. And then finally, an overall master volume control. We then have a pair of small toggle controls a gain boost which kicks in about 10 dBs of extra gain to both channels when activated, and then the channel selection switch. 
A red LED light above both lets you know when they're on. Both of these are foot switchable, by the way. The front panel concludes on the far right with standby and power toggle switches. <laughs> Front panel tour concluded, let's head around the back, shall we? Because that's when it starts to get even more interesting. What will be revealed is the onboard reverb control, a series effects loop, some neat foot switching options, a built-in power soak, and more besides. Let's go. First, let's quickly go across the bottom from left to right. Then we'll get to zoom in on the power soak section. Next to the power cord receptacle, we have two foot switch jacks, and each one works with a two button foot switch, such as the beefy angle Z4. The first one allows you to switch the onboard digital reverb on and off, and also a neat function called MVB, which is an acronym for Master Volume Boost. When activated, MVB boosts the master volume by approximately 2.5 dBs, making it perfect for boosting solos and lead fills during rhythm playing. <laughs> Yeah, that works. Nice. The other foot switch jack allows you to switch channels and also activates the gain boost function. Another very useful feature. Next, we have the send and return jacks for the tube buffered series effects loop, the level control for the reverb, a quarter inch headphone jack, and a frequency compensated balance line out, which is after the power amp section. Then finally, we have three speaker output jacks, the usual suspects. This done, let's quickly check out the Iron Ball's built-in power soak section. Now, as clearly stated in both the manual and also on the rear panel, the power soak only affects the 8 ohm speaker output. It has four settings, full power, which is 20 watts, then 5 watts, then 1 watts, then speaker off, meaning you can record in silence using the balance line output. The 5 and 1 watt settings are also studio and neighbor friendly settings as well. Nice stuff. Now, even though this is only a 20 watt amp, the Iron Ball is a very, very loud 20 watt. -er. So much so that I've done this video just using the 5 watt setting. And trust me, I'm not a volume wimp. Honestly. Before I sign off though, I should quickly mention two more things. Point number one, the cab I'm plugged into is the Engel E212VB, a 120 watt vertical 2x12 cab loaded with a pair of Celestian Vintage 30 speakers. Now, not only does it match the head visually, but sonically as well. It's also incredibly roadworthy. It's built from Siberian birch and weighs in at an impressive 77 pounds. And that's heavier than some 4x12 cabinets out there right now. Beefy indeed. Point number two is this. The Iron Ball has a sibling named the Iron Ball Special Edition. And that bad boy boasts even more cool features, such as MIDI switching and control, built-in IRs and more. But hey. That's a whole other video. For more information on this excellent tone and feature laden piece of fine German built guitar amplification, please go to sweetwater.com or better still, call your sales engineer and he or she will be only too happy to guide you through it all. I'm out, see ya. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment politely please, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. Now here's me wishing you and yours a simply wonderful day. Cheerio.